Hey everyone, this is Brad again, and we are covering the third checkpoint of the Unit 2 Pong project. Um, as you can see, I've made a couple of changes, and I just wanted to cover those before we went any further, um, because they are slightly important, but the one thing I started with was right here. Um, when we start our game, originally we just had broadcast reset, and we went straight to this loop right here, to this section of code, but when we start the game, what we want to do is reset our scores to zero and zero. Um, this is obviously if we don't reset it, you know, and we're still playing, if those scores have incremented at all, they'll just continue to stay as they are. So I wanted to go ahead and reset those to begin with. Um, another thing that I have is this section right here where we choose our starting direction. Originally, when we set this up, we were picking a random number between 1 and 360. And while that works, the one issue that you're going to have is if the ball's going straight up or down, essentially the ball's never going to hit either the left or right side. Or, you know, if you had too wide of an angle, it might take forever. For example, you would have the ball kind of going all the way up here and down back and down. And it would take a minute until it reaches the, uh, the side. So what we did was set a starting direction so we would either go left or we would go right and then pretty much just picking you know kind of a, an angle that would give us uh, a more direct approach to either paddle um, and finally the last thing we did and I have the old examples of it right here is we were checking you know if we're touching the edge or if we have our x position greater than 200 and the reason for this is you can't just use touching edge of course because you want to check if you're touching the left edge or the right edge um, so what I did was instead basically create these two um, sprites that I have set up right here on both the left and right side. And instead of checking to see if I'm touching the edge now, pretty much just check to see if I'm touching that right side sprite or my left side sprite. And this will allow me to basically see if we're touching the edge without having to worry about any of these super complicated conditions later on. Um, and so with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into what we did to complete checkpoint three. Okay, so how do we finish up the last checkpoint of the Unit 2 Pong project? So as you can see here, I've added some things to my code additional to the left and the right side. Um, here I have a sprite that I'm going to use to show who the winner of the game is. And you can see right here, I have another sprite that I'm going to use to um, show the user, allow the user to click if they want to start a new game. So just to show these real quick, um, they're very simple. I created them in paint. They don't have to be super complicated. I just sort of use them so that, you know, theoretically, if someone new was using this, they would be able to have this directed, um, you know, prompt to start a new game or who wins. So to do that, again, you've probably seen this before, but I just imported a costume that I created in paint. So this is my new game button that I've uh, titled using a shorter name, just NG button, which will come in handy later on. And then of course, for my winners, you can see I have a different costume right here for player two and player one winning. Um, just to do some basic setup, sometimes I know that we don't always see this setup and some of these things aren't super obvious. So I kind of wanted to show this. I want to set the size of this to 50% since it is so large. That allowed me to do a little bit more. Um, and then of course you can see I've also added that when the flag is clicked, I want these things all to hide because I don't want to be able to see these when we first start out. Of course, I don't want to have these popped up. So when I click, they should disappear. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this correctly. Um, now the question is, when do we want these to show up? Well, and then of course we're going to tie action to them, but when do we want them to show up? Well. We want these to show up when either user um, scores five points. So what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these conditions because we no longer need them. I am going to check for a condition. So since we already have these score variables, it's gonna make it very easy. Um, basically what I'm going to do is check inside of both these loops to see if either user has reached the correct score. So each time we increment, Either score will check and see if that score has reached a particular number. So I'm going to go ahead and click right there, go to operators, go right here. I want this to be five for both of them. We're going ahead and duplicate, set that right there, set this right here. Every time score one is incremented, we'll check and see if it's now five. And actually, this is not correct. Every time score two increments, we'll check and see if it's equal to five. And then what do we want to do? Um, so the control is what I want to do. I want to broadcast something. And the reason I want to broadcast is because it's going to make it easier for everything to check and see if this is 
been hit. So broadcast, we're gonna set this first broadcast to player one wins. We're gonna set our second broadcast for player two winning to, you've probably guessed it, player two wins. So when these are broadcasted, everything else will check and see what's going on. Um, the second thing that I want to do is have something that happens when everything receives this message. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and say for the Pong ball when I receive player one wins, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this, or when I receive player two wins, we are just going to um, pretty much go to zero, zero and stop. So you know what, actually what will make this a little bit easier is if I just go ahead and hide the Pong ball whenever this happens. So when everything happens, I click hide. Now we're gonna go to the winner pop-up. So the winner pop-up, when we go and something happens, we're gonna do the same thing when I receive. Player one wins, we want to looks. We wanna to switch to our costume of player one wins. Oh, no, sorry, wrong thing. P1 wins. And we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this. Select player two wins. We want to switch the costume, P2 wins. And so I can go ahead and show right now. It'll switch the costume, but we actually want to show it. That would be helpful. So I want to go ahead and switch the costume and then show the reason that I'm switching to the costume before I show is because I want the costume to be set. That way there's no chance that maybe it would um, you know, show as player two wins and then suddenly switch because that's just the costume it was using before. So now if I click, you can see it shows. Um, another thing that you'll wanna do just to make our code a little bit more neat is I wanna go to a particular area on the screen. I'm gonna put this below for now. Um, I basically just wanna to go to zero, zero go player one wins and of course the ball will hide once we're done so that won't be an issue um, the next thing that I want to do is go right here and of course we want to hide um, and then when we receive either message player one wins or player two wins we're going to go ahead and go to a position and then show ourselves. So go to looks, go ahead and show, and show. Um, I wanna go slightly further down because I want it to be out of the way for the player one or two win, so I'm gonna do negative 100. So now if I do this, you can see it goes right there to the bottom. Um, we're gonna do one more thing, which is we want so that the player can Go ahead and click this. So when I am clicked, we want everything to basically go away and a new game to start. So how I would do that is I would go to, let's see, when I am clicked, I want to go ahead and broadcast a message, which in this case would be new, new game and click OK. So when I'm clicked, I broadcast a new game and then I do nothing else. If I go back to the Pong ball, which we would basically do right here is when the flag is clicked, we would reset. So the final thing that we want to do is whenever the player clicks new game or whenever, you know, the new game is selected after either player wins, how do we go ahead and restart the entire thing over again? Well, the answer is it's pretty simple and we're going to do this by checking what we're broadcasting right here. So when I'm clicked, so in this new game, little sprite right here is clicked, we wanna broadcast new game. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for that on the Pong ball because that's sort of what's controlling most of the flow of our game right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this code right here because essentially I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna set both scores to zero, show the ball and then broadcast reset, which will go into our logic of what the ball is actually doing during the game, right? So. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of when flag clicked right there. Go to control. I'm going to check for a broadcast. So I'm going to use when I receive, new game, and it should start all over again. Um, the other portion that we want to do too is we want to make sure that these player one wins and new game sprites change as well. So when I start a new game or when I receive that message, also want these to hide. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate right here. 
move us down. When I receive new game, I want these to hide. And then I want the new game sprite to hide as well. So when I receive, I'm just going to duplicate this code, drag these out, change this to new game, and then go to the looks, find the, sh the hide button, and then just use that right there. So with all that being said, we should be able to play a complete game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show that off and hopefully we don't get any bugs. Um, go ahead and stop. And I'm just going to let the ball go. So we're going to see it go and hopefully increment one way or the other. Here we can see that's a little bit dis dis uh, non-advantageous to us because that's going to go for a while. We're just going to go ahead and let it for now. And that is hilariously slow, unfortunately. I'm going to make sure I actually don't hit it with the paddle. And it hit the paddle. That's fine. So actually, if I hit it on that side, we can go ahead and speed that up. You can see it hits. And we should hopefully see a winner here in the next second or two. I apologize. So you two player two wins, which is correct because score two is five. And then if I click new game right here, game restarts and the scores are reset. And so that's all there is to the unit two pong project. That's the last checkpoint that we just hit. Um, you know, there certainly are some better ways to do a lot of this. Um, you know, I kind of do these videos with the intention of showing sort of the most direct um, and easy way. And of course we made some corrections throughout. Um, you know, please do leave a like and comment for the video. And um, if you have any more elegant or better ways to show some of these things, um, please leave them in the comments and let me know. I especially appreciate anything that can s sort of show, um, you know, the different viewers of this video how to do things in a more elegant way. So with that being said, thank you very much.